Hi friends, please subscribe to Amravati Media and press the bell icon for more latest updates. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the State Legislature, it is a great privilege and honor for me to address this joint session of both houses of Andhra Pradesh State Legislature on the occasion of the Budget Session 2022. Our nation our state have gone through a difficult phase in the last two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. We a lot to the fact that the pandemic is not over. We all need to be cognizant of a possible recurrence of this menace. Bifurcation of the United States, five years of police paralysis during 2014 to 19, a year of economic downturn during 2019-20, and two subsequent years of COVID-19 pandemic have severely impacted the state finance. My government's steadfast commitment of extending support to welfare of farmers, women, underprivileged, marginalized, and vulnerable groups has ensured that even during this excruciating difficult times, rural consumption and spending and the economy as a whole does not take a nose time. I am proud to say that owing to the impact of interventions of my government, the state has demonstrated real GSTP growth of 0 to 0.22 percent in the financial year 2020-21, and as against this, the country's real GDP sank by 7.3 percent during the same period. During the financial year 2021-22, the state GSTP at constant prices demonstrate a year on year growth 9%, 91%. For the last 13 years, for the last three years, my government has been making relentless effort in ensuring decentralized and inclusive governance. In coherence with the objective of decentralized good governance, we have embarked upon restructuring of districts. My government has decided to restructure the existing 13 districts in the state to 26. This new district administrative setup shall start functioning on the auspicious day of Ugadi Telugu New Year, 2nd April 2022. We are our commitment to the welfare of the government employees who are regarded as the pillars of our administration. My government has implemented the 11th Pay Division Commission to the government employees and pensioners of the state with the fitment of 23% and plenty of other benefits including the release of five installments of general allowance in one go and increasing age limit for the retirement from 60 years to 62 years. This is despite continued financial stress on the government exchequer due to shortfall in the resources primarily because of COVID-19. This bears treatment to our commitment to employ economy. COVID-19 pandemic had a deleterious fiscal impact while revenues were constrained. On the hand, the expenditure had to be stepped up for COVID-19 mitigation measures, protection of 
livelihood and ensuring the development did not get deleted on the other. After the subdued growth reached last year, the state economy is projected to bounce back to equal levels. The advanced estimates of state economy for the year 2022 show the overall growth at 16.82 percent at current prices. The per capita income has moved up to 2,4778 from the 1,76,707 last year with a high impressive growth rate of 15.87 percent. Local global making Navaratnalu with STDs and localization. Amid the persisting threat of the pandemic, our steadfast commitment to extending support to welfare of the farmers, women, children, unprivileged, marginalized and vulnerable groups continue. Our focus remains on the high standards for education, health, agriculture, women empowerment and inclusive governance. The elaborate inclusive model of governance we have adopted under Navaratna rule to improve the lives of our citizens is improving holistic and merits replication by other states. We have implicitly adopted the UNS Sustainable Development Goal broad agenda of leave no one behind under the Navaratna framework wherein all the SDGs have been mapped into the state welfare schemes that are implemented on a patient basis. Through localization of SDGs, my government is ensuring that human and economic development takes place in a harmony with the environment. The effective implementation of integrated welfare program has been facilitated by the transparent and objective mechanism of directly transferring the financial assistance into the bank account of the beneficiary without in leakages and thereby significantly improve the lives of our citizens. The village and ward secretariat and volunteer system that my government has established are paying this dividend by making the extension of government service. Transparent, timely and efficient. This innovative initiative has facilitated both employment, generation and corruption free public service delivered at the doorstep of the citizens. Education. A literary genius, it is said, resembles all, though no one resembles him. Dr. S. Radha Krishna. My government has recognized education as the most effective tool to transform the younger generation. The focus is on utilizing every possible opportunity to develop children, youth, to be globally competitive, strengthening infrastructure components in all government schools is being implemented for a period of three years, starting from 2022-21 under Manabadi Nadu Nadu, 15,751 school in phase one have been completed with an outlay of rupees. 3,669 crores. In two years, strengthening of remaining 42,000 schools and other educational institutions will be taken up under this initiative. My government is spending rupees 15,000 crores in all these phases of Manabadi Nadu Nadu. Enrollment of retention has envisaged in the SDGs to improve 
सी ग्रॉस एंडोरमेंट रेशियो माय गवर्नमेंट इज इम्प्लीमेंट प्रोग्राम ताकि जगन आमा बोडी जगन विद्या कनुका जगन अन्ना गुरुमुद्रा जगन विद्या दिव्याना जगन अन्ना बस्ती दिव्याना माय गवर्नमेंट हैज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ए स्टूडेंट किट consisting of three pair of uniforms belt a pair of shoes and two pairs of socks textbooks red books work books oxford english telugu dictionary and a school bag to 47 lakh students of classes between 1 and 10 all government and government aided schools in the state under the nana vidya kanika on the first day of the, the opening of the school with a view to have higher rate retention rate jagannana amabodi is implemented my government has supported 34.5 lakh mothers to send their children to school and rupees 13,023 crores have been spent under the scheme so far to address the issue of malnutrition among the children my government is serving nutritious and tasty meals to 43.26 lakh children of classes 1 to 10 so far since 2019 an amount of 2640 crores is incurred under the jagannana gurumulla quality of education realized with the global importance of english language and equipping our students for 21st century skill demands my government is working to provide quality english medium education to under the academic and administrative reforms initiated by the government to improve education outcomes by providing qualified subject teachers schools are categorized into six types satellite foundation school fundamental school functional school plus pre high school high school high school plus higher education for the first time in the country like in our poor my government is implementing jagannana vidya divana scheme with its noble aim of ensuring higher education is accessible to even children for under privileged sector and providing full fee reimbursement to every eligible student studying btech b pharmacy iti polytechnic and other degree courses by paying the amount directly to the mother's account regularly with due on quarterly basis so far an amount of rupees 6259.72 crores has been credited to 21.55 lakh students similarly jagannana Basati Divana scheme is being implemented to provide assistance to the eligible students for food bread and hostel expenses in a fast of its kind initiative in the country the government is creating rupees 10000 for iti students rupees 15000 for polytechnic students and 20000 per those pursuing degree and other courses in two instalments per annum to every eligible student this facility is being extended to all the eligible students in the family irrespective of the number amount is directly credited to the bank account of mothers of students so far an amount of rupees 2304.97 crores has been credited to 
18.77 lakh eligible students. Health and nutrition. The first wealth is health. Ralph Persham Emerson.